All right, so I will have to say that of all the lessons that um, I would be <laughs> asked to teach on, it would, it, when I looked and saw that this lesson was talking about how do I manifest the power of God, I thought, oh no, I'm not the person to teach this, no. But it's so perfect for the, for the lesson because we're going to be talking about one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And that is, and probably one of the most familiar to believers and non-believers, and that's about the story of the exodus of the Hebrews um, out of Egypt. First of all, I'd just like to say that of all, it's just like all stories in the Old Testament are about Jesus. Jesus is displayed in all of them. And, you know, Trevor, I remember one time years ago, and I'd never really thought of this, that I was, uh, when I first started going to this church, attending your basic Bible class, and you made the point, I can still see you, the whole Bible is about Jesus, mm -hmm. not just the New Testament. Right. And I kind of, you know, I think, I remember thinking, that's really true. I've never really thought of it that way. But the Old Testament is about Jesus' coming, the Messiah. Jesus is coming. The New Testament is about Jesus has arrived and he is coming again. And so just like, so even though this is an Old Testament book, we see Jesus all through the story and the power of God manifest in this story. Um, so throughout the story of the exodus of God's people from Egypt, we see Jesus, God, working masterfully behind the scenes uh, to ensure that the Hebrews entered into the land that God had promised their forefathers. And so when we're thinking of this, so God had set it upon his heart to take them from slavery into freedom, just as we have been taken from been taken from the slavery of sin into the freedom of salvation through Jesus. So one of the things that I want you to be thinking about, and I'm not going to answer this question for you at the end of the study, but because I'm still kind of pondering it for myself, is how do I manifest the power of God? How do I see that? Or how do people see that? Um, so first of all, to understand, to first of all, to understand that question is to really understand who God is, because we really can't trust something that we don't know. Um, and in order to fully trust in God, we need to understand what his inherent nature is. And when I talk about a person's inherent nature, I mean who they are at their core. Uh, what are the qualities of that person that define them? For example, you know, I can tell you that one of JR's inherent qualities is kindness and helpfulness and compassion. So if I were to describe JR to a person, and JR is my husband, for those of you who don't know, you might not know. So if I were to describe JR to someone who doesn't know him, I would, have, I would say, and I have said this about him, that he is kind, he's compassionate, and he loves to help people. I mean, those are the three things that to me kind of define who JR is a person. Now, I'd also say he's super funny, and, you know, he's pretty cute, but, you know, those three things, the fact that he's kind, compassionate, and helpful, are the three core things that I would use to describe my husband. Um, and we see that at work in God. So if you want to turn in your Bibles to Exodus 3, 7 through 8, we have the Lord talking to Moses. And he describes the situation. The Lord said, talking about the Hebrew, his people, he said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt, and I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptian and to bring them out of that land and into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So in this verse, we see that God sees, God cares, and God acts. And that's really one of the ways you have to describe a compassionate person. A person is who is...